Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. We're returning to Robert B. Stone and his amazing book, The Power of Miracle Metaphysics. To me, this is one of my favorite Robert B. Stone books. You can check out our first discussion of this book in Miracle Metaphysics Power. In this episode, I wanted to go into an interesting chapter on how to use metaphysical power to make the right decisions. This has a number of techniques and exercises that you can use to tap into the universal mind and make decisions. Oftentimes we face decisions in our life and it's hard to know what the right thing to do is. This book was written quite a while ago, but has very modern techniques that you can use to utilize your body and the energy around you to make amazing decisions in your life. How to use your metaphysical power to make the right decision every time. Many people have studied metaphysics and started to use it successfully, have changed their lifestyle. Things seem to drop away from them that seemed quite important not too long before. Some give up smoking. Some cut down on drinking to only an occasional glass of wine. Some no longer enjoy steak, roast beef, and hamburgers and seem to lean more to fish and poultry. Some cut down on office time and try to spend more time out of doors. Some watch less television, spending that time in some other quiet way. I'm not talking about three-pack-a-day smokers, potential alcoholics, or extremists in any of these matters. They probably would not have been attracted to metaphysics in the first place. It is the moderates that give way to change. Why? I believe it is due to their increased attunement to the universal or cosmic consciousness. They naturally want for themselves what nature wants for them. Excessive drinking has always been known to be a risk. However, only in the past decade has smoking been officially recognized as dangerous to health. Now the chemicals injected in beef are under increasing suspicion and the emissions of television tubes are being judged more soberly. As to artificial light versus natural light, the recent findings are even more dramatic. Apparently man needs the full spectrum of the sun's light in order to enjoy optimum efficiency of body and mind. At a cancer research lab of the University of Chicago, it has been found that artificial light turned the hair of rats coarse and brittle and some turned completely bald. Rats exposed to pink light lost their tails, developed calcium deposits, and had behavioral problems. On the other hand, male rats exposed to full sunlight lost their tendency toward cannibalism and instead helped female rats care for the litter. In his book Health and Light, Dr. John N. Ott, director of the Environmental Health and Light Research Institute, in Sarasota, Florida, tells how researchers have discovered why chickens lay more eggs when ordinary incandescent lights burned into the night. It is not as one might conjecture. The chickens think it is still daylight and work that much longer. Actually, the light affects the pineal and pituitary glands, triggering the increase in egg production. When the late Dr. Albert Schweitzer's daughter returned from Africa, reporting the onset of cancer among African natives, where none had been previously known to occur, Dr. Rod asked half-jokingly whether sunglasses had arrived there. She looked rather startled, for indeed, they had. Natives wore sunglasses as a sort of status symbol, some wearing nothing else. Life needs natural light. Metaphysicians attuned to the cosmic mind are moved in the direction of their needs, physical and mental. By going to your alpha level and feeling a sense of belonging and cooperation, With Cosmic Mind, you develop uncanny judgment and everything seems to go right for you. Metaphysical picturing that helps you become a business genius. As a metaphysician, you now have a normal tendency to make the right business decisions. Some of these may appear to flout reason and contradict normal economic laws. Yet, when the dust has settled, they emerge as the right decisions. This tendency toward psyching in on the right decision is enhanced by periods of quiet alpha level relaxation and by picturing light uniting your consciousness with a larger universal consciousness. 
how Mr. Sanford W. made a million in spite of himself. Mr. Sanford W. went through several business ventures and emerged with less than he went in with. Then, he got into theater work while directing and producing on Broadway. He met a spiritual leader in New York who inspired him to spend time each day relaxing and feeling at one with the universe. Mr. W. began attracting the right manuscripts, skilled actors, and bigger audiences. Soon, the money was rolling in. He decided he needed sound investment opportunities. While at the alpha level, he moved to take a trip to Texas. There, he invested in certain industrial property, which doubled in value practically overnight. These fortuitous decisions occurred again and again. Today, he is a millionaire, spending less time working at making money, more time at writing and speaking on the advantages of periods of relaxed oneness with the universe. There are an infinite number of ways to erase the illusion of separateness and restore the reality of being a cell in the universal mind. So far, you have sent your consciousness out to embrace this galaxy and all others. Wooed the universe as a lover. Filled your consciousness with universal light. Intoned the universal mantra, Om. Felt a oneness with the universe. Tapped the universal mind through your superconscious mind. For many, a universal concept is difficult to feel. There needs to be a more graduated approach to the infinite ideal. So, some metaphysical methodology takes this into account by providing a few steps upward along the way. You can devise these steps as well as anybody else, in fact, better. For instance, if a missionary attempts to provide a native with a step toward the concept of God by providing him first with the concept of Jesus, the native may be unable to do as well with that concept as he might do with the concept of smaller gods of the sea, of the wind, or of the mountain. A man may have to go through a number of step-up transformers to eventually accept himself as part of something bigger than he is. It might go something like this. Member of the family, member of the firm, member of the, a political party, resident of a state, citizen of a nation, member of the human race, expression of life. You may prefer a spatial approach yourself where your universe is, your room, your home, your home in school or office, your town, the earth, this planetary system, this galaxy, all space. Another method might be the religious approach. In Christianity, this might be local minister, national religious leader, international religious leader, a saint, Jesus. The successful metaphysician is constantly seeking to expand his consciousness in such ways and to purify it by freeing it of negative concepts of limitations. I can't. True, there are methods of acquiring specific information metaphysically which help you to make correct decisions. But decision-making is often a continuous spur-of-the-moment process, one where taking time out for alpha picturing through walls or putting on somebody else's head to tap their intentions can be a tedious matter. We will review these latter procedures as a means to decision-making, but your first priority for accurate decision-making should be to remove the separations between you and the universe and giving your decision-making mind the benefit of universal mind. It is like using a magnifying glass that enlarges a billion times. Do a metaphysical action plan using your own step-up transformers. I will merely call them numbers, one through 10. Devise them yourself along the lines of your own expansion of consciousness from you to the universe. Metaphysical action plan for tapping the wisdom of universal mind permanently. One, relax, deepen your relaxation. Two, be aware of yourself. Marvel at the working together of all your living cells as one person. Love yourself. Three, be aware of yourself in connection with Number one, step up transformer. Feel love for number one. Feel the bond between you. Four, if you can be successful feeling oneness with number one, proceed to do likewise with number two. Keeping number one in the picture, feel love for number two. Feel love for number one. Feel two, the love number one and number two have for each other and for you. Five, continue to do likewise for additional step up transformers until you feel you are stretched as far as you can go. 
end your session. 6. Repeat this metaphysical action plan a day or so later, moving from step up transformer number 1 to number 2, etc., and to the one you left off with plus at least one more. Once you've united you with the universe, you will likely have no need of the step up transformers again. Take a moment to unite yourself with the universe daily. So what Stone is saying is you create a step up transformer. It might start with you, then your parents, then your family, then your city, then your state, then your country, then the planet, then the solar system, then the galaxy, moving all the way up to the universe. Then in this process, what he's recommending that you do is you feel love for the number one, which is you, and then feel number two, which is your parents. And then you would feel the bond between you. And then you slowly start to create a loving relationship between each of these things until you've expanded it out into the universe. How to dissolve decision-making blocks. Impurities in metal increase its resistance to the flow of electrical energy. Impurities in consciousness increase its resistance to the flow of intelligence. You can connect a motor to a source of power, but if the connection is of a high resistance, not enough power will get through it to run the motor. Impurities of consciousness are acquired. The baby's consciousness begins to acquire impurities with the shock of being born. Then come insecurity, loneliness, fear, all brought on by threatening experiences. I don't care who you are, what degrees you have, what corporate or political position you hold, how much money you have made, how popular you are, you have acquired impurities of consciousness. We all have these hang-ups, biases, fears, or phobias, resentments, habits, and other aberrations from perfection. If you recall, in the first few chapters, we attacked this problem in a general way. We used a kahuna technique for shaking negativity out of the body via our legs. Now, we can focus on some specific impurity, one at a time, and eliminate each by another technique, relive and relieve. Before you begin this metaphysical action plan, identify some problem physical or psychological, which you would like to dissolve. If there are a few, place them in the order of priority that you would like to see them exit. How Miss Caroline M. got rid of a craving for sweets she had when she had to make decisions. Miss Caroline M. became quite expert at alpha picturing and directing events in her life. She was a confident and effective person. However, she had a weakness for chocolate and other sweets that she could not control. She knew it was not good for health and the extra pounds it put on her lessened her confidence in herself as an attractive woman. But more important, she found that she would procrastinate about making decisions and instead hit the chocolates. She resolved it was an impurity of consciousness that was interfering with her perfection as a metaphysician and one that she would have to eliminate in order to progress further. She relaxed and told her subconscious that she would like to know the major cause of this weakness for sweets. She then sat quietly, permitting her thoughts to reminisce. She found herself thinking about kindergarten, how the teacher taught them to cut out figures and paste them up. She tasted the paste. My, it was good. She kept tasting the paste. Occasionally, the teacher would catch her and reprimand her, but she continued to sneak these tastes of the paste instead of deciding where to paste what. When she ended her relaxation and reminiscing session, she wondered about the connection between the paste in kindergarten and the sweet tooth today. If there was a connection, what a silly reason to be bugged by such a health sapper. She did not have to wonder very long. Apparently, just the reliving of this incident was enough to release her from her ties to sugar. As she put it, I'm free at last. She was able to make decisions without sorties to the candy box. If you have a personality quirk, a hang-up, bias, or physical problem, identified, you are ready to perform this conscious purifying metaphysical process. Metaphysical action plan to dissolve decision-making blocks and help purify consciousness. 1. Relax deeply. 2. State the problem to yourself. 
3. State mentally to your subconscious mind, I would now like to know the major cause of this problem. 4. Permit your mind to drift in a daydreaming, reminiscing way. If an experience comes to mind that seems pertinent, permit it to play itself out. 5. End your relaxation and review intellectually the experiences you have just relived. Can you see the causative connection with the problem? Does it seem stupid, ridiculous, perhaps ludicrous that such a cause with irrelevance today could have such an effect on you today? 6. This reevaluation of the cause should dissolve it and the problem should begin to disappear. 7. Repeat this procedure on similar problems in the days ahead to continue the consciousness purification procedure. Business executives keep a wary eye out for people in their organization with personal problems. They know that marital discord, drinking, or special eccentricities can interfere with the decision-making process. Business success requires clear thinking. Metaphysical success also requires clear thinking, but its requirements go even further toward purification of consciousness. This is why some of the very first metaphysical work in this book was directed toward positive thinking. It is a nerve-ending process. You need to be constantly aware of your own consciousness. This is a private matter between you and yourself. It should not be discussed with others. When you discuss a matter such as this with others, you do two things. One, you discharge the energy of purpose that moves you forward. And two, you inadvertently acquire their secret opposition. An artist who talks about the painting he will paint may never get to paint it. The writer who talks about the book he will write may never get to write it. Vocalizing short circuits the spark of volition. Also, people inwardly resent your purifying your consciousness. Quietly, they crucify you. The purification of consciousness is the one occult metaphysical action which must remain secret. This is not because the methodology is to be known only by a few. That kind of occultism is out in this new age. It is because the knowledge by others of your doing so will negate your results. With a pure consciousness, the universal mind and you work together making all things possible. So think pure. Be pure. Do pure secretly. Obtain signals from your body as to which course to take. The pendulum principle discussed in the previous chapter has an interesting decision-making application which you should know about. He is selling. You are buying. You are far apart, but negotiations have brought you closer together. Will he drop his price more, or should you make the deal now? You cannot say, just a moment while I play with this button or string, but you can do something else just as good without being observed. The body is a pendulum. It can sway back and forth or lean to the left or right. This leaning can be made to be a super conscious link to your conscious mind just as is the pendulum. Here's how. Metaphysical action plan A, get instant answers from your body. One, relax in a standing position. Two, Close your eyes and turn your eyes upward. 3. Repeat the word yes mentally and then lean to the right. Repeat the word no and lean to the left. 4. Now repeat the word yes mentally and visualize yourself leaning to the right. Repeat the word no mentally and visualize yourself leaning to the left. Do not move by conscious effort. 5. Open your eyes and repeat the word yes mentally, followed by the command, lean, and see if there is a slight leaning to the right. Repeat the word no mentally, followed by the command, lean, and see if there is a slight leaning to the left. Repeat steps 1 to 4 until step 5 shows consistent results. 6. Test yourself on valid but not critical problems. State the problem, followed by the command, lean, get the answer yes or no. Carry it out and determine if judgment is accurate. If this happens consistently, you're ready to use this method on difficult or critical problems. I would suggest when using Robert Stone's method in this manner to ask obvious yes or no questions. Is it daytime right now? And then you lean to the right. Or 
is my cat's name PJ? And if that's the case, you lean to the right. Something that's obvious, and then you'll see if it works. The pendulum method is generally accurate and trustworthy. One possible interference can come from conscious intellectualizing or prejudging. You can want the answer to be yes, so you create a voluntary energy signal. You can consciously control this conscious interference by turning your thoughts upward, as you previously did with your eyes, at the moment of stating the command lean. Leaning is just one way of getting a body response. Some metaphysicians prefer responses which do not require a standing position. There are other responses that can be induced. Tingling sensations in the shoulders, tingling sensations in the hands, movements of the four fingers, heat sensations in the knees. If you wish to augment your ability to receive metaphysical answers through your body, then select one of these body responses and do the metaphysical action plan B. Metaphysical action plan B. Get instant answers from your body. 1. Relax in a seated position. Close your eyes and turn them upward. 2. Repeat the word yes mentally and ask for the body sensation you selected to occur on the right side. Repeat the word no mentally and ask for the body sensation to occur on the left side. 3. Open your eyes and proceed as in step 5A, commanding the body sensations to occur. 4. Test in step 6, as with the previous method. Special note, it is common for yes to be on the right, no to the left. If any inaccuracy occurs, proceed over again with plans A and B, asking which side is yes and which side is no. This could be especially applicable to left-handed people. You can permit your body to use its own sensation as a signal as follows. Metaphysical action plan C. Get instant answers from your body. 1. Relax in a seated position and turn your eyes upward. 2. Repeat the word yes mentally and ask for a body signal. When you think you have received such a signal, repeat the word no mentally and see if you receive the same type of response either on the other side of the body or in some other way. 3. Proceed as in 5A and 6A using this response. How Colonel Bert A. received a signal when he met the right person. Bert A. was a retired colonel who had a great interest in metaphysical work. He taught his body to provide a signal in the form of a tingle in his shoulder to indicate whether a person he was dealing with was honest and sincere. A tingle in his right shoulder meant all as well. A tingle in his left shoulder was a danger signal. These signals stood him in good stead when he received invitations to speak. He would hold the invitation and ask for a signal. Invariably, the body signals foretold correctly either the success of meetings he attended or the failure of those where he heeded his body's warning not to attend. Colonel A was able to develop these signals so that he could be told when he was talking to somebody when he had known in previous life. Hypnotic regression would confirm this, but Colonel A could use also metaphysical means to go back in time to review the relationship. How Dr. Dorothy P. detected the color of auras by her own body signal. Dr. Dorothy P., a psychologist who taught metaphysics, could not see auras even though she taught others how to develop this ability. To compensate for this lack, she trained her body to provide a tingle on her left shoulder for the red side of the spectrum, on the right shoulder for the blue side of the spectrum, and various points on the back of the neck for colors in between. This worked quite dependably for her, being confirmed visually by others. It not only helped her in her teaching of aura viewing, but now she could see the color of the aura of the person she was dealing with, thus becoming aware of this sincere or devious person. Before we leave the subject of using the body as a pendulum, let me remind you that if the decision-making occasion permits you to retire to privacy where you can use your button or string pendulum, the metaphysical methods provided you in previous chapters are certainly applicable. In the case of a complicated question, it is best to divide them up into simple components. For instance, your lawyer has made shocking fee demands before the trial despite a previously consented to fee arrangement. Do you negotiate? Do you appeal to the court to help? Do you dismiss him and take a new attorney or some combination of these alternatives? The order of your questions might be question, what do I do first to solve this problem? 
If the court goes against him, should I seek another attorney and whom? Apostle Paul reply could be court, yes, or Davies. These answers may lead to further questions which should also be simplified for best results. The superconscious knows and it is telling. How to order a dream that solves a special problem for you. The subconscious and superconscious talk to us nightly in dreams. Dreams sponsored by the subconscious mind are attempts to get across psychological information that would help our conscious mind to know. Dreams sponsored by the superconscious mind are attempts to get across psychological information that it would help our conscious mind to know. Dreams sponsored by the superconscious mind are attempts to get across psychic information happenings at a distance in time or space. So you find that some dreams reveal you to yourself and some dreams reveal the future. I'm not going to cover dream interpretation. Not only is this a large field covered adequately by other books, but it is my personal opinion that nobody else can help you understand your dreams. You are your own best dream interpreter. Symbols used by dreams need to be examined by you for meaning personal to you. However, I am going to tell you how to control your dreams so that you can use them to your metaphysical advantage to get answers to your problems. How Mrs. Ruth J. saved her job by requesting an answer in a dream. Mrs. Ruth J. was a widow who worked for a large East Coast department store. She was in the job only six months when her mother on the West Coast was taken seriously ill. Since Thanksgiving was approaching, along with the peak of the business holiday, she was told that she could not take a leave of absence without forfeiting her job. Yet reports from West Coast relatives indicated the end might be near for her mother. Mrs. Ruth J. would gladly give up her job to be at her mother's side if indeed her death was imminent. But not for just another bedside visit. She decided to use a dream ordering technique. She relaxed deeply just before retiring and repeated mentally, I want to have a dream explaining my mother's illness. I want to remember it and understand it. Mrs. Ruth J. woke up in the early morning hours. She had seen her mother in a dream. She looked 10 years younger. She was working in the kitchen and seemed to want to be left alone. She ordered her daughter to leave the kitchen. Then she woke up. The message was clear. Mrs. Ruth J. decided to remain at work. She phoned the West Coast every few days. Within a week, her mother was out of danger and convalescing. Ordering a dream is even more simple than ordering a spare part. No special code number, no long wait for delivery. All you do is exactly what Mrs. Ruth J. did. Metaphysical action plan to get a specific answer in a dream. 1. Relax to your alpha level in bed, preparatory to falling asleep. 2. Tell yourself mentally, I want to have a dream to give me the answer to state the problem. I want to remember the dream and I want to understand it. 3. When you awake, remember the dream, understand its meaning as an answer to the stated problem. The decision about which decision-making technique to use. You now have a choice of methods that permit your conscious problem-solving intellect to be reinforced by the sum total of all your experiences and learning via the subconscious and by the sum total of universal wisdom via the superconscious. The problem arises. Which problem-solving technique do you use? To help you make such a decision, here is a roundup of these techniques and their areas of preferential use. Travel through walls to observe. This is a technique very similar to what we've done in which you imagine traveling to a, a place through walls to observe something in particular and then you use that information. Best where problems involve identities of friend and foe where general activities and progress affect decisions. Putting on another person's head. This is a technique mentioned in the first episode where you take somebody else's head and put it on yourself and you suddenly get wisdom and understanding of how they're thinking and what's going on in their head. Best where problems involve the thoughts or attitudes or intentions of one or more persons. So, for instance, if you wanted to know if somebody was interested in buying something or was interested in you, you imagine them and then taking the, their head and you put it, their head on your head and in the process, you are able to read their mind and understand what's going on. Alpha relaxation and picturing. 
Best where general goals and directives need to be determined. Works best after special metaphysical action plan to unite you with the universe and the dissolving of major decision-making blocks. And in this case, alpha relaxation is using the standard Silva mind control technique, rolling your eyes up and relaxing your body, counting down, and then picturing. Pendulum and the alphabet. Best for determination of specifics of an immediate solution, especially where yes and no answers do not suffice. This way you use the pendulum to spell out exactly what it is you want to do. And then body signals. Spur of the moment decisions where pendulum cannot be applied and where yes and no answers are all that are needed. The decision is yours. Robert Stone gives a variety of different techniques that you can use to make decisions. Have you been encountered recently with struggles in making a decision? The thing to remember is that your heart and body are incredibly smart and wise and know the future. And you must get better at trusting your instincts. And this is a way to do that. I have found leaning forward as yes and leaning backward as no is easier for me. But I've used this several times all the way back to when I started my podcast and I asked, should I start this podcast? Is it going to be worth it? And I leaned forward for yes. Just try this. And when you start, it's important to test it out by asking obvious yes and no questions. I have found that to be the case. Many people have found success using the dream technique. It's as simple as just asking yourself a question before you go to sleep and then making sure to affirm to yourself that you remember the dream. Many times when people do this, they don't remember their dream, but you continue doing this. After several days, you'll have a dream that will tell you the answers. So you got to remember to do this right as you're going to bed and you ask the question. For some, it's easier to write down the question on a piece of paper next to your bed when you go to sleep, and that might work for you. But definitely, try this. The other amazing technique here that I'm glad I went over is programming your body to give you signals so you can program that you feel tingling in your knees, your hands, your shoulders, your arms. And if you do this regularly and program yourself, when my right arm is tingling, that means yes, or my left arm is tingling, that means no. Or it could be as the case that's given here where you can't read auras, but you can use your body to signal what somebody's aura is or anything in particular. You can program your subconscious and superconscious mind to do anything that you want. You are an amazing program that has infinite intelligence running through it and we definitely do not take advantage of this on a regular basis. Your body is incredibly smart and wise and you can use it to communicate with you intuitively answers that you may need. We're always facing decisions on a regular basis. This is tough. Sometimes decisions aren't as simple as they're given here, but you can still try doing this. It's not going to be 100% guaranteed, but the more you do it, the better you're going to be at it. Eventually, you can use this to ask significant and serious questions and really learn how to help people out. You can use your body to ask for questions as to what you should do to help other people out. It is interpersonal and specific to everybody, as he indicates, just like with the dreams. Nobody can interpret your dreams but you. That is something I agree with Robert Stone on. And it's just the same as nobody can interpret the sensations that you have in your body. You are responsible for programming your body. And so now is the time to do it. This is an older book from many years ago, but people have been using these techniques for a very long time. Muscle testing is a big deal. A lot of people are using it because they have found it to be accurate and true. And you should do the same. Please experiment with these techniques. As I say, with all my episodes, this is a laboratory. We're constantly experimenting. So what we have here is a blueprint that you can use if you're struggling with making decisions. Follow this blueprint to give your subconscious mind and superconscious mind ways to communicate with you regarding questions that you might have about things that you need to do. 
give yourself the tools to make decisions right now you're just randomly making decisions you might go with a gut instinct but what does that mean sometimes we don't know how to follow our gut because we are given so many different signals in our bodies and minds images that flow through so it's important to program your body to respond to the superconscious and subconscious minds so i want you to try this try these techniques and put in the comments what was most effective for you was it the dream technique was it getting instant answers from your body was it the leaning technique put it in the comments and then everybody watching this video go to the comments and see what other people are saying and try it out and when you're done i want you to go to the comments and share what happened with you and if it worked why not go to vegas and start using these techniques should i put all my money on red find out what happens the more you do it the better you're going to become attuned to the very very subtle signals that your body sends and the more you do this you will open yourself to other avenues and ways to make decisions and get intuitive signals from your body the decision is always yours that's the amazing thing about the world and the life that we live is that you are free to make whatever decision that you want oftentimes these decisions are important and they make a big deal so learn how to make decisions by following your own inner guidance you can find all episodes of the reality revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to the reality revolution <laughs>